Good morning. We're talking about usability testing too. This is Dr. Tata. So usability testing basics. So now that we understand that there are many different issues such as content and design and the dynamics of a website and uh, the dynamics of a website and all that. The question is how do you go about testing it, right? So. Um, here are the basic, this is very, very basic, but, but a practical overview. When should you test? Firstly, for two weeks, at least two weekdays and at least one weekend test. That's, there's a reason behind that. Weekdays have a very different traffic flow and a very different type of user behavior because people typically are working and people have a tiny bit of hurry when they are actually visiting a site versus weekends where people seem to be much more relaxed and they might show greater amount of browsing behavior. So you want to understand both pieces of the puzzle. One is people being very pragmatic and wanting to get things straight on. And the other thing is people getting into more of an exploring and venturing and browsing and understand how the website or the app works for each of them. Second, when should you test? You should test periodically and consistently. Once in the morning, once during the afternoon, once during the evenings, at least. Why? Because again, people behave differently when they are visiting a site in the morning. Now, of course, if it's a weekday morning, it means people are really in a hurry. They might be having other chores that they need to do, heading to work, doing all that stuff. Might be, um, assume it's a city, they might be on a commuter um, setup where they're checking things quickly, we need to get things done quickly. Afternoons, of course, oftentimes it's sort of a bit of a, um, you know, a quiet lap that people do in terms of shopping and evenings again when they need to order things or they again might show a bit more browsing behavior so understand things during the whole day if you understand that so test periodically and consistently but test it across the day and across the week and of course if you're practicing agile uh, increase periodicity of frequency so when you're doing agile our child basically says, you know, you want to do things quickly, or want to do things in small modules with very, very specific deliverables and objectives in mind. So if you're practicing Agile, um, test it in terms of give them smaller activities, give the users smaller activities, but test it in small chunks of time. What do they do in, um, if they have a minute to spare? If they have 30 seconds to spare, can you actually order something in 30 seconds? Can you order something in one and a half minutes? These are typically things that people do when they are in a bit of a hurry, when they're in between things. So oftentimes you might want to run that show that way. So once again, when should you test at least for two weeks, weekdays and weekends and across the day? morning, afternoon, and during developments, and you can decide how modular and how agile you want your usability tests to be. Second, how many participants? At least three to five participants. Differing age groups. You want people that are young, that are middle-aged, and you want older people because you want to see whether um, things such as accessibility, whether things such as um, uh, ability to um, read a certain things, understand a certain thing, um, move forward to try and craft a solution to certain things, differs in terms of usability across these different age groups. What about different technology expertise? That's also very important. You have to look at people with low versus medium levels of technology expertise. Of course, you know, medium would be medium to high rather than just um, low versus medium. Uh, but when you're doing it, all you're trying to get at is the fact that, well, if you are a bit of a Luddite, which is you know, don't have much of a technological efficacy in general, 
are you still able to manage it? You know, very similar to the very oft mentioned um, hackneyed phrase that says, oh, well, tell it to me like I'm a five year old. So can you actually explain, can a website work seamlessly for somebody who has no idea on very difficult things such as, well, how do I create a return shipment? How do I create a label? How do I create a return merchant authorization? How do I reset my password? So understand that across various levels of technological expertise. So once again, how many participants, at least three to five different age groups and different levels of technological expertise. Now, if you were setting it up as a design. Given that you've got three different age groups and you've got two different types of expertise, that would be three times two. So you'd have a six different sample space set up where you'd have six different um, groups. Once it would be young with low, middle-aged low, middle-aged medium. Um, so young, medium, uh, older, low, older, medium. So you'll see that it's two times three, right? Three different types of age groups, two different types of technological expertise. That's your six set of, or sets of people, or sets of samples. Uh, how do you test? Uh, test them virtually via microphone and screen sharing. I know there's a lot of chat about doing it in person. I'm a bigger fan of, um, not including any kind of response bias because the very fact that you are there might change, make people nervous, might make people hurry up, might make people slow down, might make people go, you know, sort of digress. So I would rather say, and of course, this is the age of, uh, this is usability testing in the age of the coronavirus. So use screen sharing and microphone, um, use Skype and Zoom because that works very easily and you can easily share your microphone without creating a security vulnerability such as desktop sharing. So that, that should be pretty good. So once again, to, um, to test, decide on when to test, um, how to choose your participants and choosing the environment to test, which would typically be your Skype or Zoom. Now, what sort of questions should you ask? Of course, begin with the basic background questions. Uh, who is the user? Ask them their demographics. Ask them to introduce themselves in terms of the person. Skip the name, uh, gender, age of the person, income of the person, years of experience using smart phones and online experience, level of technological experience, so that's beyond that of smartphones and online, you know, whether they are a database administrator, whether they're just a sales clerk somewhere, whether um, they are simply uh, doing a rideshare app, that's their own experience. So understand their technological experience. Every sort of person matters tremendously because everybody is a user and everybody is likely to be a potential buyer or an engager of the services offered on the website. Next, focus on specific activities such as how do you register, log in, log out, reset your password, use multi-factor authentication. So get them into a single mode, but a single activity that's very coherent and also very consistent. Say, so don't mix it with, well, let's register and then create um, a return merchant authorization or a returns authorization, because that makes it very com complicated and too convoluted and too many pieces in the middle. Second, how do you search, find and add a product to a cart, remove the product, add a payment, check out, initiate a return. So in this case, this is a cart based activity. So the first one was a login based activity. Second is a cart based activity. How quickly can you find objective return policies? So for example, for instance, if you're testing a prototype of a login process, and this is from the Steve Krug book, the task might be create an account, login using an existing username and password, retrieve a forgotten password, retrieve a forgotten username, change answers to a security question. So make sure you focus on specific activities and you begin with the background questions that define who your user is because that matters.
So this is directly from Steve Krug that talks about um, various parameters for traditional testing versus do-it-yourself testing. So you'll see that um, uh, we'll, we'll just quickly go through this. Uh, time spent is about one to two days of tests, then a report to prepare a briefing or report, um, then a week to prepare a briefing report, followed by what to fix. Do it yourself is one morning a month, including testing, debriefing, deciding what to fix. Um, and uh, when do you test? When the site is nearly complete. In this case, you're all dealing with completed sites and apps, so it doesn't really matter most of the time, you know, because the whole idea is it is a Kaizen, which is the Japanese term for continuous improvement. And that's what you want to run. So no site ever is perfect. So even this is post-release usability and um, continually throughout the development process, number of rounds are uh, testing. We talked about that number of participants in each round. Um, we're mainly talking about do it yourself testing right now. So this is three. How do you choose the participants? Mm, choose people with a variety of different uh, sets. Mm, you know, different demographics, um, different levels of technological understanding, uh, different types of, you know, technological efficacy and all that. Uh, where do you test? In this case, of course, the answer is remotely. Who watches? So, in this case, the, here there's a, Steve Krug says half days of one side testing means more people can see the tests live. I say, you know, at the end of the day, you can either record the test um, just by doing a screen capture, or you could um, make sure that it is, um, you create something like a RACI matrix, which is RACI, who's responsible, who's accountable, who's, um, who basically is informed and who simply put um, uh, who you consult with in order to make changes. So you could create a racy matrix and uh, that's the one who'll watch it. Report a one to two page email summary decisions based on team's debriefing, who identifies the problem, the entire development team and any stakeholders. And so the stakeholders could be everybody from sales and marketing because they also depend on how well a website performs, an app performs, could be uh, general management, who's basically doing operational reporting, operational flow, uh, could be your cybersecurity experts, of course your development staff. Primary purpose, identify the most serious problems and commit to fixing them before the next round of testing. And out of pocket cost, this of course doesn't really matter, but this is very straightforward, a few hundred dollars here or there. Oftentimes, um, people will offer, or this is uh, in professional environments, they'll offer them maybe a $20 Amazon gift card or something like that, or a Starbucks card in order to get things done. So that takes care of basic usability testing parameters and considerations as you're moving along with it. Thank you very much.